Wave Cooker is a bit of an odd duck. Before doing anything else, we ought to look at the way this thing actually shoots. When firing this gun, you'll probably notice pretty quickly that you can damage multiple enemies at once. You may also notice that this gun has an overclock that gives blowthrough. But what does that do if the gun can already damage multiple targets? Well, while you can damage multiple targets, you can't damage multiple targets if one of them is behind another one. You need mostly unobstructed line of sight for each enemy. Think of it like this. Every time you shoot the gun, it sends out a whole lot of hitscan lines that travel until they hit something. Kind of like a shotgun shot. But each bug can only get hit once by each shot. So even if a bug eats the whole spread of lines, it only takes one instance of damage. Instead, if you have a setup like this, now two bugs are taking one instance of damage. And if you add a third bug behind one of those, it's obscured and doesn't take any damage. Unless you take the blowthrough overclock, in which case it is. Or if it becomes just barely exposed enough that one of the lines touches it. I'm not telling you that you should use the blowthrough overclock, by the way. I mean, it's, it's okay, but mainly what I'm trying to get across here is you should understand that with how this gun works, a wider angle of fire means you get to shoot more bugs without actually decreasing your damage versus any one of them. So, that brings in these mods, the Wide Lens and Power Supply Overdrive, which I'm just going to call Focused Lens from now on because that's what it is. Both of these are toggled off and on with R. The Wide Lens makes each shot overheat your gun faster in exchange for being able to hit a wider area and often more targets, while the Focused Lens shrinks the shot width in exchange for faster rate of fire. You do also have this mod in Tier 1 that greatly increases shot width, period. This can be combined with the wide lens to hit an even greater area, or the focused lens to minimize the penalty. However, this is pretty overkill in the former case, and in the latter case, you should just toggle back to normal instead. It's not really worth taking concave lens when it competes with damage and ammo. The next thing you'll notice about Wave Cooker is likely that it does low damage. Base damage is weak and the rate of fire isn't incredible. At base, you can barely kill a Has-5 Grunt before overheating. It can't get weak point bonuses. The health bar will flash yellow with reducing health sometimes, as if it's hitting a weak point, but it's just visual. So, let's put on some mods to make it less sad. A lot of the power of this gun comes from combining it with Driller's primaries, but I'm going to be holding off on the combos for now. First, we'll be looking at the cooker by itself. So, put a pin in these two mods for the time being. The slow mod in Tier 3 inflicts a unique slow that lasts for one second on hit and slows enemies by 50%. So, more than neurotoxin, less than electricity. When you're shooting fairly weak enemies like grunts with this gun, they die relatively quickly and with little aim required, especially when clustered together so you can hit multiple. Especially, especially when you have the Tier 5B Boiler Ray equipped. With that, enemies have a 50% chance to explode, dealing 100 damage to nearby enemies, which is frankly pretty damn good at clearing out groups. And weaker enemies, like NATO sites and swarmers, get wiped extremely fast with this. I haven't mentioned damage types yet, but this gun actually deals 50% radioactive and 50% fire damage. The 50% fire damage is more important because some enemies, notably Mactera, are weak to fire. This means that this gun is actually better at clearing Mactera than you may expect, despite not being able to hit weak points, especially when they're in groups. But it's still quite bad at killing tanky enemies. Very bad. Let's go from no overclock to something very general use, Mega Power Supply. 
This gives a big rate of fire boost and a huge amount of extra ammo. Since Cooker frequently requires sustained fire and overheats easily, I do recommend switching Tier 2 Rate of Fire over to Tier 2 Cooling with this overclock. Alternatively, you can use Gamma Contamination for a damage over time effect. It has a 25% chance of being inflicted every hit, and you do feel that RNG, but the damage over time effect is pretty good. The afflicted target takes 5 damage and radiates 3 damage around it every 0.2 seconds for 7 seconds. The direct damage over time effect alone is enough to kill a slasher, but you do get extra damage against other nearby enemies. And shooting a crowd makes it easier to get those 25% procs anyways. It's a little slower than just holding down M1 with Boiler Ray, but milking this effect can be a lot more efficient. Back to Mega Power Supply. We still have slightly higher rate of fire than before we put on the overclock, so everything I was just doing got slightly better. It does a good job of killing groups of grunts. Can be quite nice against Mactera. And is amazing at killing many small bugs. but it's still quite terrible at killing big boys. In comparison, it's more awkward to kill not only small enemies, but to a degree, grunts with Sabata and EPC, at least if they're in a group. They can kill individual Mactera more quickly by shooting the weak point. But as long as it's a group of Mactera, then Cooker is pretty competitive. It gets more of an advantage the more clustered up Mactera are. And, also, the farther away they are, because it's hitscan, it doesn't care about weak points, and the farther you are, the easier it is to catch multiple of them in the radius. However, both Sabata and EPC kill big enemies a lot faster, especially Sabata against burning targets. I know that that itself is a weapon combo, I promise I'll get to Cooper weapon combos in a moment. Also the elephant in the room here. Uh, thin containment field is basically overpowered in general if you take a little time to learn how to use it, but that's sort of an outlier in this game's balance and if you compare all of Driller's secondary options to Thin Containment Field, you won't get much variety in your life. So, if you're not going to use the Cooker for combos, things are pretty simple. Cooker snaps at killing groups of weak targets and is a comfortable, low-effort way to kill common Mactera. But it's garbage at tanky targets. The question, then, is what do you consider worth it for a secondary on Driller? The thing is, all of Driller's primaries, by default, are really good at killing groups of squishy targets. Granted, sometimes the Cooker can be better at it, especially for the really squishy ones. Nothing in this game handles NATO sites as well as this thing does and the long effective range can be nice. But when you can spray heat radiance, drill and sticky flame these things away very efficiently anyways, do you really want to have another tool for killing these things well, when instead you could have a secondary that's stronger against tanky targets? Which otherwise would, relatively speaking, be a weakness for Driller. That's basically the big question about this weapon, if you want to build it this way. It's pretty easy to say that, at least built like this, it's not worth it. 
But to be honest, my opinion on Swarm Clear Cooker has softened a lot over time spent using it. Part of that is due to the way that Driller does have builds for his primaries that handle single target a lot better than normal. Sometimes, sacrificing Swarm Clear in exchange. For instance, you can use Ice Spear to just delete Praetorians and Oppressors. Anything with a lot of health, really. Between that, and maybe also axes, you don't really need a secondary that's good at single target. But since you're spending cryo ammo on these guys, you might want your secondary to pick up the slack against swarms. Another option is Sludge Blast, which is far better at single target than normal Sludge Bump, but worse against crowds. And, if you've got a team you can rely on, maybe you just let them kill tanky targets while you focus on sweeping up all of the little bugs. A lot of people will find using this gun for crowd clear to be kind of dubious on Driller. And that's fair. But I do think there's a place for it, albeit a bit niche. But that's not all, because... We're finally getting to these other mods. And this one up here, too. All of these mods are made to combo with Driller's primaries. Tier 5A, Contagion Transmitter, works only when you are shooting enemies that are either Gooed or Neurotoxined. It gives a 30% damage boost, which is nice, but not huge on this gun, and has a 10% chance to spawn small Neurotoxin clouds. This mod is solidly fine. The dot stacking is nice, and it is more damage, so it's pretty easy take if you're using Sludge Pump. But the real show stealer is Tier 5C, Exothermic Reactor. This mod does two things. First, every time you hit an enemy that is either burning or frozen, it has a 25% chance to cause the temperature shock effect, which does a flat 200 damage. Second, once that happens, the mist released from that enemy will deal heat or cold to enemies around the target. This can lead to some goofy chain reactions. I should mention here that the second mist effect used to also affect the target that got temp shocked itself. This was pretty overpowered because it would allow you to almost immediately reset the status effect, letting you temp shock it again really quickly. That got patched, which honestly is for the best. This mod is still really, really good after that change. If you aren't looking to do a weird single target primary or nothing but swarm clear build, you might as well throw all the footage before this point in the garbage. Exothermic Reactor is completely transformative for the cooker's single target damage. It turns it from pretty terrible to roughly as good as the other secondaries. While still remaining quite good for clearing out groups of weak targets at range. It is true that you have to spend primary ammo to reset the status effect, but you don't normally spend much secondary ammo to get the temp shock, so it evens out. Also, it tends to be a bit better for CRISPR than Cryo, because you can inflict heat more easily. Now, I want to be clear here and say that taking this mod is not necessarily a no-brainer. Boiler Ray is genuinely a pretty good mod, it's just that, in the context of most Driller builds, getting more Swarm Clear on your secondary is lower value than getting more single-target damage. Oh, and before I forget, Tier 3B mod makes burning or frozen targets spread their temperature to nearby enemies, which is kind of redundant with the mist effect on exothermic. So you probably just want the slow instead. However, there is one other option for increasing your single target damage, and that is the overclock blistering necrosis. And despite how unusual the weapon has already been up to this point, the following overclock is by far the most complicated thing related to this weapon. It might be the most complicated single effect in the whole game. 
I'm going to explain what this thing does as quickly as I reasonably can while still being accurate. So, every time you damage an enemy with this, there's a 10% chance it spawns a boil on them based on where you're aiming. When this happens, there's a cooldown of 0.3 seconds before you can spawn another boil, although that doesn't make a large difference with a chance as low as 10%. Boils themselves always have 50 effective HP, and when damaged, deal damage to the host creature equal to 1.5 times what the boil took. And once broken, deal another 80 poison damage to the host. So you're probably thinking, I can shoot it and deal 50% more damage. But, a lot of the time, that's not actually the case. First thing is, and this is the positive thing, it's possible with some weapons to damage both the boil and the creature itself at the same time. The wave cooker is one of those weapons, so if you shoot at the boil, you'll probably also be hitting the creature, and you'll be doing the 1.5x boil damage and your normal 1x damage. So total, you'll be doing 250% damage per shot. But only sort of. More on that in a moment. When weapons that deal radial damage hit a boil, the boil doesn't deal 1.5 times damage, instead it just does 1 times which still adds up with the shot's normal damage against the creature to 200% total. If you're wondering what radial damage is, it's not a damage type like kinetic or fire, but it's still something that the game tracks. It's a method of dealing damage, rather than a type. Anything that does damage in a spherical radius is radial damage, like explosions or the splash of sludge pump shots. So that was the good part, right? You can deal more damage than you would expect with some weapons, including the cooker. The second thing is, the boil is not actually a weak point, so weak point bonuses from weapons don't apply. The third thing is that when the boil damages the host creature, it can't actually do more damage than its own current HP. So let's say you're shooting a creature that has a boil in the boil with a weapon that does 12 damage. Your first shot will do 18 damage, then 18 damage, then 14 damage, then 2 damage, then 80 damage. Because the boil loses HP before it transfers damage, if you kill the boil in one shot, it won't actually transfer any damage at all, and it will only do the 80 poison damage that it always does when it's broken. That means, with weapons that do enough damage, you can actually lose damage by shooting a boil. For instance, here's Ice Spear. And here's Ice Spear hitting a Praetorian normally. Basically, any weapon that does more than 80 damage will lose damage when shooting a boil. And that's against regular body shots. The next thing is that, since boils are their own hitbox, if your weapon can't penetrate through them with blowthrough or whatever else, then it can get blocked by a boil and not hit an actual weak point, which will usually, again, mean less damage. For instance, here's Scout with AI Stability Engine. This Warden has a boil on the weak point. will do a lot less damage when shooting the boil than when shooting the weak point beneath it, so sometimes, boils can just block you from hitting weak points that you want to hit normally. I am sure that at least some of this behavior isn't intentional, and this overclock might get patched before long. But as it is right now, I can't really recommend using Blistering Necrosis. It will give your cooker bursts of extra damage, but it's very inconsistent, and can easily wind up inconveniencing your teammates instead of helping them. I'll leave you with three cooker builds that I do actually recommend. This Temp Shock Mega Power Supply build for either CRISPR or Cryo Cannon. My personal favorite, a build to stack damage over time effects on many enemies at once with Sludge Pump. A Boiler Ray build for non-combo Swarm Clear. And last, this Gonzo Close Range Brawling build, which isn't actually good, but can be fun to mess around with.